Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to look into the works of the philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre and his ideas around existentialism and the anguish of freedom. Fascinating. Firstly, a bit of background around existentialism. Now, existentialism was a philosophical thought that became very popular in Europe within the 20th century. Although there were quite a few philosophers who contributed to this line of thought, such as Nietzsche or Kierkegaard, Sartre really brought existentialism under the spotlight and shaped it into a defining theory. The central core principle of existentialism is that existence precedes essence. What does that mean? In short, it means we define our own essence. We exist first, then we develop who we are. I'm not sure I understand. Okay, the essence is the fundamental thing that makes something what it is. It is the defining attribute or characteristic. Let's take a chair. There are millions of different types of chairs in existence, each one completely different to the other. Yet, there is something within each of those chairs that makes them chairs. This is because each one has the essence of a chair. It possesses the defining attributes that make it a chair namely legs, a seat, and a structure enabling people to sit on it. This is the essence of a chair. I see. Now, philosophers up until the 20th century followed what is known as essentialism, dating right back to the ancient Greek thought that each person has their own innate essence that makes them who they are. So you, John, you have an essence that makes you you. This essence is innate. It preceded you. You were born with this essence already programmed. The fundamental essence of John, what makes John John, was an attribute determined, something you had no part or choice in. Right. Now here is where the existentialists fundamentally disagree with the essentialists. As I said, the core principle of existentialism is that existence precedes essence. We are born, we exist first, then we develop our essence. Sartre famously said, what do we mean by saying that existence precedes essence? We mean that man first of all exists, encounters himself, surges up in the world and defines himself afterward. If man, as the existentialist conceives him, is indefinable, it is because at first he is nothing, only afterward will he be something, and he himself will have made what he will be. I see. So. According to the existentialist, we are born, we exist, then we spend our entire lives creating our essence, developing who we are. There is nothing that is innate in us, no preceding essence, we are blank slates, and who we are develops throughout our journey of life. Our essence is then developed through our choices, we are free agents, free to choose and to experience the consequences of our choices. These choices develop who we are and create our essence. As Sartre explained, our existence comes with the anguish of freedom. Anguish of freedom. Sartre makes freedom sound like a painful, negative thing. Well, to a certain extent it is. Understand, Sartre was an atheist. He rejected the notion of God. Now, this effectively meant we were not created for a specific purpose. We are not guided in our choices, our lives were not planned or determined. We are thrown into life against our will, as none of us choose to be born. So once we are thrown into this world, we eventually gain self-awareness, and we have to make our choices. With no essence, no purpose, and no innate meaning, we have to create all these things for ourselves through our free choices. We are responsible for what we become. We are responsible for our essence and for our purpose. We cannot use the excuse that this is just part of our nature or this is what God or the universe wanted. We bear the complete responsibility for our existence and our meaning. Right. This is a huge responsibility. And when we realize and accept that we are doomed to bear this responsibility, we feel the anxiety. We feel the anguish. You were not created with an essence or with a purpose. You were thrown into this world and you have to develop it all from your free choices. 
you are responsible for your life. And in fact, Sartre would say your choices are responsible for all of mankind. When you exercise your freedom, you are choosing for all mankind. You are telling the world that this is how you think man should exercise their freedom. All of this responsibility, this is the anguish of freedom. Interesting. But is it really the case that we all have freedom all the time? I can easily think of situations where one would not actually have any choices. Really? Well, yes. Consider a prisoner, captured and locked in a cell. They have no freedom, they have no choices. How can they develop their essence if they have no choice? But they do have choices. When Sartre is talking about freedom, he does not mean that unlimited choices are available to every person at every moment in time, but rather there is a choice to make and we must then deal with the consequences of that choice. And then we are faced with new choices and we must choose and we must deal with the consequences of those choices and so on and so on. Even not choosing is a choice. You are choosing not to choose. Okay. So in the case of the prisoner, they still have a choice. They can choose to remain imprisoned and hate it. They can choose to remain imprisoned and embrace it. They can choose to try and escape or they can choose to end it all. Either way, there are choices and the free human must choose and must deal with the consequences of their choice. As Sartre explained, those who live not knowing of their freedom and their choices are living in bad faith. Those who claim they must do something, they have to live a certain way or things have to be a certain way or that there are no options or choices, this is bad faith. We are free agents and we are always free to choose. Yes, I understand. So this is it in a nutshell. Our existence precedes our essence. Our essence is developed by us by our free choices and this heavy responsibility should bring us all a little anguish. Truly fascinating, even an empowering theory. It feels good knowing we can always change, that there's always a choice, that we are not destined to do or be anything, but we are effectively in the driving seat. Exactly. But of course, Sartre's existentialism comes with a lot of problems. Really? Like what? I would like to ask, how free are we really? And I would like to challenge the existentialist principle that existence precedes essence. Okay, go ahead. Consider this, you are born, you do not choose the time period you are born in, the parents you are born to, the country you are born in, the socio-economic background you are born in, you do not choose how tall you will be, how beautiful you will be, how strong you will be, if you will have severe deformities or health issues, all of these factors will play a part in how you develop, they will mould you, they will shape you, they will develop you and you will go on to make your choices based on the moulding of these factors. So you did not choose any of these factors yet they contribute to who you are and who you are drives your choices. These factors were all at play before your existence and yet it decided your essence. So effectively, the essence did in fact precede the existence. I see what you're saying, but I do not necessarily agree that this erases the existentialist principle. Sure, there are many factors at play outside of our freedom that contribute to who we are. You can even say the fact that we are human beings comes with biologically innate characteristics. And Sartre agrees, even though our birth and upbringing is out of our control, ultimately we are self-aware. We make our choices. In fact, we have to make choices. We are in the driving seat. Our lives are not planned. Our essence is not innate. We will develop this as free agents. But I really think you're downplaying how vital our upbringing is in determining our choices. Our core personality traits are determined at such a young age. Some psychologists would even say as young as three. So just follow the logic. Upbringing shapes your core personality traits. The core personality traits determines how you choose and your choices create your essence. So if your upbringing was already at play before your existence and this directly affects your essence, then essence precedes existence. I think you're missing how much control we actually have over our lives. You're effectively taking a causal determinist point of view. You're saying we do not have any choices. Everything we choose has already been decided based on the upbringing laid out before we entered the world. I fundamentally disagree. 
Sure, our bringing molds us to a certain extent, but we are still free agents. We are responsible for our choices. There is no one determined path for our lives. It is constantly changing every second based on each conscious choice we make. Okay, leaving causal determinism to one side, is it really accurate to claim that we have no fundamental innate essence? I would disagree with this. Why? To give you an example, I enjoy listening to heavy metal music. Now, I do not ever remember choosing this. I heard some bands and instantly liked the sound. My taste in music added to my development as a person. It added to my essence, yet I did not choose to like it. I just liked it. Hmm, I see. You also see this with naturally gifted people. There are people who are just amazing at certain instruments or sports or mathematics or whatever. They are referred to as gifted. It was a gift that was given to them. It is part of them. I would say innate. Does this not add to the fact that essence precedes existence? Sure, people are born different. We each have different abilities, but it is how we use our abilities, the choices we make, this determines our essence. I don't know if I agree with that. Maybe it's a combination of both. We have some innate essence combined with free choices and over time it turns us into our complete versions of ourselves. But I don't feel comfortable in completely following the existential thought that existence precedes essence. Very well. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And what do you all think? Are you existentialists? Have you developed your own essence through your choices? Are you doomed with the anguish of freedom? Let us know in the comments below. Please like and share the video. It helps us a lot when you do. And if you are enjoying the philosophical debates, please subscribe to the channel. Take care. Until next time.